Hey guys, Jack Dugas here from Roger Security, servicing Southern Ontario for all our security needs for the last 32 plus years. Uh, we're in, currently in the installation process of putting a Ajax ecosystem in this residential property. Today I want to highlight to you the uh, Ajax video surveillance systems. Specifically, the newest on the market is their Ajax HL line of cameras, which come in turret form factor, as well as a bullet and a mini dome. So let's go through some of the features of those and uh, continue on from there. So in addition to the features you're already used to from the previous model of Ajax cameras, your higher quality image, your uh, IP65 weather resistance, your three different avenues of storage being NVRs, uh, SD cards internally and cloud storage. You're also now getting the benefit of the HL camera having the uh, night vision illumination. So that works out to about 160 feet worth of IR and illumination capabilities. They as well as the other cameras uh, come in five megapixel, eight megapixel to choose your resolution size that you're looking for. Uh, they all come in black as well as white cameras that we have installed here on this property today. Um, and they all connect very seamlessly with your entire Ajax ecosystem, whether that be the doorbell, security intrusion, home automation, setting up with scenarios. You can do video scenarios with these to work in tandem with your security system and all of your other uh, Ajax items. Uh, and we'll go through a little bit more of that in a minute. So now we're gonna take a look in the app at some of the different settings and functionalities of the cameras themselves. So as you can see, we have three cameras plus the doorbell. We also have these situated to a uh, NVR for recording and storage. Um, so let's open one of these up. So as you can see, the picture clarity and the quality, we even have a pretty overcast day to day. And you're still with the capabilities to be able to view license plates, logos and phone numbers. Um, and you can see it in great detail. So across the bottom, what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see a scrubber bar. And you'll see the different colors and the different icons and what they kind of mean. Uh, the green ones are just kind of general motions. Um, could be leaves blowing, could be a tree moving, something like that. The blue ones, as you'll see, are uh, people. So you see we have a fellow walking across the camera line there. And the gray, because this is set to continuous motion, just means there is a recording space there, but there's no event, right? So there's no person, there's no vehicle movement, there's no animals. Uh, again, at the bottom of the screen, you have a couple of different options across here. The first thing in the bottom left corner, you'll see there's a little sound icon. So if you do tap that, it will um, record the sound through the camera. Now, I don't know if we have a decent clip here for someone making sound, but it does play back, it does record the sound. You can't speak through it, but you can listen to what's happening on the outside. The next icon there is the calendar. So since this was installed today, you won't see any, any of it, but on dates previous that have recordings, there'll be little white dots around the numbers that show you where you have recordings from that day. So you can pick whichever day you need, use the scroll wheels at the bottom to show you what time you wanna start at. You hit apply, it brings you right back to that camera. Right. Um, when you go into the live view, you'll see the button in the middle uh, is for home automation devices. So what we have here is a couple of things that are integrated into the system already. You can see the smart socket. You can see the garage door and the front door locks. Uh, you can even see the water stop that we have installed, um, as well as what's grayed out at the bottom, but you can have relays to do a few other varieties of uh, devices. So right from the camera, you can go right into these home automation devices. Uh, let's say you had someone at your front door, you could hit the front door button and it would just unlock your front door. Right now my door is unlocked, so it'll lock it, but either way. So that brings up your home automation. The little funnel beside that one is for filtering. So you can pick and choose what you want to filter through your AI events. So you can pick, you only want to see clips with the humans. You can only see clips with the pets. So if you're looking for something specific, you don't have to scroll through the entire day's worth of data and video. Uh, you can just narrow it down through filtering and whatnot. Scenario execution, as you can see there, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but through that, you'll see once I hit show selected, it only shows the footage that has uh, people detected. 
Okay, so let's clear that. Now, if you do have a piece of footage that you want to keep, right? So let's say we're trying to get this uh, human interaction here. The three, the three dotted button in the bottom right corner pops open a small menu. You can either hit snap photo. What that'll do is take a screenshot from the camera of specifically what you're looking at right now. And that'll save that as a high resolution image in your, in your photo library on your phone. Um, we wanna go to download. So what we're gonna do if we're looking at this clip here, you're gonna scroll the bar to the front, to the beginning of that clip, hit start here. Then you're gonna go in, go to the end of that clip, or let's say you want two clips. You go to the end of that one. So then you're gonna hit end here. You'll see it kind of gives you a little snapshot of the dates, the times that you're looking for. You can choose to include or don't include the audio depending on what you're, what you're requesting. Obviously, if you're looking for an audio file, it'll be a bigger file. Uh, so you might want to keep this in mind if you're trying to clip a long uh, segment of video. Hit request file in the app. It'll tell you that your file is preparing to download. Once you hit OK, you can go back to your main menu. You'll see in your notifications in the bottom. Um, once that clip is ready to go, it will pop up in there for you to click download. So we hit download in the corner, hit the little green box, and now it's downloading straight to the phone. So this is coming straight from the NVR right into your phone. Uh, it's using the Ajax software to transmit that right to your device, uh, but the storage is local to your NVR in this case. So if we go into opening the photos, you can see here that I've already got, I've already got the clip already stored on my device. So there's the first clip that we have of the person, and because it, we decided to keep two clips in there, it keeps it as one segmented run. So you'll see about halfway through, now we're getting into the second clip with the person walking by the camera again. Looks like he's doing a little bit of loitering, might have to call somebody. So now when we go back into the app, what you'll notice here is you have your devices list. So this will list everything that has to do within your Ajax ecosystem. Right, so the first one will always be your hub at the top. Next, it pushes your home automation stuff so you can see the two door locks that come up. And from that as well, you can just slide it right on the screen right there and that'll lock and unlock your door as well, quick and easy. You can also, with the touchscreen keypad, you can show the home automation devices as well. So anything that you see in here that's home automation, whether it be locks, uh, water stop valves, uh, light switches, which are available as well, uh, you can access all of those, not just in the app, but also on the touchscreen keypad, not the standard one, but the touchscreen keypad. So we slide up, you can see that there's your, your cameras right there along with the doorbell and VR, and then you have all the other devices that we've installed, security, home automation, all of that. At the bottom of the app, you'll see it says video wall. So from there, this displays all of your cameras all in one spot. So you can hit the doorbell, right? We start there, you can see your video as it's happening right now, slide over, that brings you right to your next camera and you can keep doing that till as many cameras as you have left. A couple of things that we can do in regards to uh, settings. Once we get into it here. So your recording preferences, as mentioned before, you have three recording options. You have cloud storage, SD card, and then you also have the NVR, which is the application we're using right now. So what we ended up doing was for the memory card because we don't have one in it, we decided to do the recording mode as never, so that way it disregards that there's no memory card in the camera, because it will also alert you of that, whether it's been taken out or maybe you forgot to put it in there, if that's what you wanted to use, it will give you an error to show you that there is no SD card in it. Once we go into the NVR, you'll see that we have it on continuous recording. There's two different recording modes. So there's continuous, but then there's also on detection or scenario. So if you, want to limit your amount of storage. You don't want to pay the extra money for a bigger hard drive to allow you for continuous storage for the length of time that you want. You can also turn on only on detection or scenario. What that'll do if you refer back to our scrubber bar, it'll eliminate all of those gray boxes that um, are just recording nothing, but it will still keep record and record of everything that you have. Even the general motions, not necessarily just the AI events, okay? You can also change the recording to only happen when the, when the system is armed or always, which is what we've done here. So we back out of there. Um, you see, you can change the notifications. You can tell it if you want the cameras to notify you, if it detects a human, pet vehicle, or if you just want any motion at all, you can set that up to notify you. 
it will still, um, it'll still sort and record these events. It just won't send you notifications. Uh, detection zones. This is something more so that uh, us at Rogers Security, our technicians will help you sort out where um, you do the motion detection range. It brings up a grid that kind of shows you where the entire view of the camera is. And then at that point you can select, okay, maybe I don't want, I don't need to see detection on the road, right? So you can erase that from the detection zone. So now it won't detect any vehicles that just randomly drive by people walking down the sidewalk. It'll only give you notifications of people who are actually physically on your property in those zones that you set up. Again, you can do um, different sensitivities and such in this area as well. Uh, the next spot is basically the same thing, but kind of more in depth for specific AI events. So you have human detection, pet detection, vehicle detection. You can individually turn on and off these detection modes, change their sensitivities again in between each and again, you can reset that uh, motion sensitive range. Uh, beyond that, there's not really much else to go into. These are all kind of just playing with the picture quality and stuff like that. If you are in a sensitive area that you're installing one of these cameras, you can go into the audio here and you can disable the audio through the playback. By default, it is disabled. So you can go in and you can pick enabled and it'll automatically turn on the microphone recording on that camera specifically not for your whole system, just for that specific camera. So if you want it for the whole system, you have to go through each camera individually to turn those on, but just be aware that it's not gonna turn it on in every single area. It's only limited to that camera. Uh, one of the last two things that I wanna talk about here is privacy zones. So privacy zones here, maybe you have a neighbor or um, another company working beside you in a business plaza of some sort, and they have an issue with you recording their entryways or maybe one of your cameras peeks into a backyard. Uh, you can set up a privacy zone by going into this section in the uh, camera. In the uh, bottom corner, you'll see a little rectangle with a plus on it. If you tap that, it pops up a rectangle on your screen. What this rectangle does is it creates a black box that essentially nothing records beyond that. Um, you can't access it from anywhere. We can't access it. Ajax can't access it sort out where you want the coverage on the uh, on the screen. So if you don't want someone to see the, draw, the street, you hit save. You can see in the image here that it has the black box on there. Nothing will be recording behind that. So let's go ahead and reset that. Then we have alarm responses. So this is something new that Ajax has kind of been rolling out in the last few months. And that is that you can have your cameras kind of work as outdoor motion sensors, right? So you can integrate it not only into your app, but you can directly integrate it into your alarm system, right? So you can see they have the different operating modes. So when your system is armed, if say you have a camera in the backyard that no one should be there at any time after you arm your system, you can change that to an instant alarm, right? So if it detects a human, because it's still not going to do it because of the AI through uh, animals, right? So you're not going to get a false alarm from a coyote running through your backyard. If it detects human presence, what it will do is it'll set off an alarm through a siren you can set up. It'll give you an alarm through your app uh, and then that'll start the process before someone even has the chance or the ability to get to your physical doorway or a window or anything like that. So that's something new that Ajax has been rolling out recently, which is just showing how much better their AI is getting month over month. This isn't year over year. They only released these cameras to us within the last year or two and already they've been making these leaps and bounds and improvements. Um, arming in night mode, same kind of thing. It has the same premise as that, but you can have it so that it, when you arm it in night mode and you go to bed, so you're still home, the cameras will arm up in the exact same way. Uh, beyond that, you know, it just shows you a couple of things to do with, again, your memory card if you need to uh, format it. Other than that, there's not really much else you can do. Make sure your firmwares are up to date. As you can see, this one, you know, good example, it's not up to date. Uh, we did just install it. So the first one you typically have to run through um, and then it should kind of keep up with it after that. So that would basically be it as far as the uh, video surveillance system comes with the uh, Ajax. Um, we will have uh, uh, some footage of, of some nighttime video with the HL cameras, right? So we do have two specific cameras that aren't on the shelves yet and they're called um, uh, well, they're turret, bullet, and mini dome. 
HL cameras specifically. As I mentioned before, they come in five and eight megapixel. They come in black and white, all the same variety that you expect from Ajax. Um, we're gonna show you a couple of clips of those cameras working in very dark environments. I don't have lights at the back of the house. There's one of them on the side of the house that's literally pitch black at night. The other cameras that we use, even the original Ajax cameras that have spectacular low light visibility, areas like that where you have absolutely no lighting, they're not gonna, nothing's gonna be able to come out of IR from that. So we'll show you clips of what these HL cameras can actually do in those dark, dark environments. And it's something to keep in mind when you're trying to map out a, a plan for video surveillance, either residentially or commercially. Uh, anyways, that's it for us for uh, video surveillance from Ajax. Uh, again, I'm Jack with Rogers Security, uh, servicing the area for the last 30, 32 years in Southern Ontario. Always looking to expand, always looking to help out new clients. Uh, if you need to contact us, you can reach us 905-319-3244. Visit our website, rogers-security.com. You can start a, a quote or a contact process through there. It'll do, link you directly to our email services. From that point, you'll get attached to a, a real person at our office, uh, office hours are nine to five, Monday to Friday. Uh, anything else you wanna get through, you can check out our, uh, our social media links um, from there. That's it for today, thanks.